This is Infantry Attacks by Field Marshal Erwin Rommel, originally published as Infantry Greft An. Here in this ebook edition, we have a brief foreword written by the person who uploaded it. Version 1.0 scanned proof and put into generic HTML format by one VP on September 14th, 2002 for Alt Binaries eBooks News Group. If you make minor corrections, increment version number by 0.1. For major changes, increment the version number by 1.0. Notes. 1. Publisher's notes and any footnotes have been moved from the bottom of the page to directly after the location in the text it refers to and placed in square brackets. In other words, it's at the base of each chapter rather than the base of each page. Part 2 of the notes. Non-English spelling of place names and proper nouns were not checked in great detail. In some words, there was the substitution of non-umlaut letters for their English equivalent, i.e. U for a U with umlauts, an A for an A with umlauts. Sometimes a U with umlauts was rendered as II by the Fine Reader 5.0 OCR program. Note 3. I moved many of the numbered sketches to their first mention in the body of the book. Here we have a brief title page. Attacks by Field Marshal Erwin Rommel, published by Athena Press Incorporated, Vienna, Virginia, United States of America. Here we have a picture of Erwin Rommel and his signature below it. On the next page, we have a map of the various fronts in Europe during the First World War and it is marked in detail to denote which areas are pertinent to which portions of the text. European borders, 1914 to 1918. Location A, War of Movement in Belgium and Northern France, 1914. Location B, Battle in the Argonne, 1915. Location C, Positional Warfare in the High Vosges, 1916. Position D. War of Movement in Romania, today pronounced R Romania, 1916 to 1917. Position E. Battles in the Southeast Carpathians, August 1917. That would be the Carpathian Mountains. F. The Ptolemyan or Ptolemaine Offensive, 1917. Position G, pursuit over the Taglamento and the Piave rivers, 1917. There does appear to be a position H listed, but it hasn't managed to make it onto the scan, unfortunately. It's been cut off due to some happenstance of formatting. And therefore, I am unable to read it out to you. My apologies. Here we have the... Um, Credits page. Copyright R, 1979. Athena Press Incorporated. All rights reserved. No part of this book may be reproduced in any form without permission in writing from the publisher, except by a reviewer who may quote brief passages in a review. First edition, Library of Congress, catalog number 79-52022. ISBN number 0-9602736-0-3 Published by Athena Press Incorporated Post Office Box 776 Vienna, Virginia 22180 Printed in the United States of America For sale in USA only Now we have a table of contents which Regrettably, due to the transition into ebook format, will not bear the actual pages up against it. Nonetheless, we shall read it anyway because it does help with providing context. Table of contents. Publishers note. 
followed by historical setting, followed by authors forward. This next section is followed by chapter one, War of Movement, Belgium and Northern France, 1914. The subheadings to chapter one are as follows. Departure, on the frontier, reconnaissance around Longwy and preparations for the first battle, actions at Blyde, on the Mayuse, action at Mont and the Dolken Woods, action at Jesnez, pursuit through the Argonne, action at Pretz, attack of Defoy Woods, fighting in Defoy Woods, night attack, September 9th through 10th, 1914, retirement through the Argonne, operations near Mont Blainville, storming Bouzon Woods, forest fighting along the Roman Road. Chapter 1 concludes, and we are followed by Chapter 2, Combat in the Argonne, 1915. It contains the following subheadings. The company sector in the Charlotte Valley. Attack of January 29, 1915. Before Central and Bagatelle. Attack on Central. Attack of September 8, 1915. Chapter 3. Positional Warfare in the High Vosages, circa 1916, and War of Movement in Romania, Romania, 1916-1917. The following subheadings are contained in Chapter 3. The New Unit. Raid on Pine Tree Knob. In the Skurduk Pass. The Storming of Lazuli. Action at Kerpenel. Valari. That double I there could also be something with umlauts being spelt incorrectly due to what they mentioned with the conversion into English. Nonetheless, continuing. Hill 1001. Magura Odovesti. Gajesti. Near Vidra. We now have Chapter 4, Combat in the Southeast Carpathians, August 1917. Approach March to the Carpathian Front. Attack against the Ridge Road Bend, August 9th, 1917. Attack of August 10th, 1917. The Storming of Mount Kosna, August 11th, 1917. Combat on August 12th, 1917. On the Defense, August 13th to 18th, 1917. The Second Storming of Mount Kosna, August 19th, 1917. Again on the Defensive. We now have Chapter 5, the Ptolemyan Offensive, 1917. Deployment and dispositions for the 12th Battle of the Izono, Izon, Izonzo. Attack of the First Day, Hevnik and Hill, 1114. Assault on the Second Day, October 25th, 1917. Surprise breakthrough on the Colverat position. Attack against Cook, blocking the Lucino. Savogna Valley and opening the Lucio Pass, the storming of Mount Cregonza, the capture of Hill 1192, Mersley Peak, and the attack on Mount Maitajur. Chapter 6, Pursuit over the Tagliomento and Piave Rivers, Masiris uh, Campeglio Torre River, Tagliamento River, Clautana, uh, Clautana Pass, Pursuit to Siomales, Attack on the Italian position west of Siomales, or perhaps it's Chiomoles, Pursuit through Erto and the Vajont Ravine, 
the fight at Longueron, combat in the Mount Grappa region. Publisher's note, Attacks is a classic in military literature, first published in Germany in 1937 under the title Intra Infantry Gereft an. It became a great success before World War II and played a major role in launching Rommel on the road to fame. The book went through at least 18 printings by 1944 when the legendary soldier was forced to commit suicide because of his implication in the plot against Hitler. The U.S. Army translated the book in 1943, and General George S. Patton became familiar with it. Patton was reportedly electrified by the book, and read it again and again until he knew it by heart. Other American officers also took keen interest in the book, and an abridged edition was published in 1944 by the Infantry Journal under the title Infantry Attacks. Today, 35 years after its initial publication in the United States of America, the book is mentioned frequently as a magnificent account of imaginative and successful combat leadership. Copies of the wartime English editions are among the most valued works in private collections. All copies in the Library of Congress and in the Army Library in the Pentagon have, however, mysteriously disappeared. This edition of Attacks is the first complete and unabridged edition of the book published in the United States. Earlier editions omitted passages potentially embarrassing to our allies, as well as a large number of drawings and sketch maps. The Army translation understandably suffered also from a hurried wartime effort. In preparing this edition, J.R. Driscoll retranslated the original German work and revised hundreds of passages in the Army translation. Bob Heitman, working with the German wartime English editions, painstakingly revised the sketches and sketch maps. Where possible, they were compared to large-scale maps of the areas involved to resolve questions of detail and provide approximate scales. In a few instances, additional details have been added. The drawings of scenes are taken from the original, and may well have been done by Rommel himself. As the autobiographical record of a great captain, Infantry Attacks is a book of historical interest and importance. In tracing Rommel's development from a green lieutenant to a confident, seasoned, and singularly successful commander, it provides keen insight into his mind and character. It is, as well, an important treatise on combat leadership and psychology, and contains many valuable lessons for those who would raise and train armies. Prime among these lessons is the reminder that men are the key element in combat. That is the will, spirit, and skill of men, led by competent and courageous officers that win battles. That high morale is developed by the accomplishment of difficult tasks. 61 years after the fact, and 42 years after writing this book, Erwin Rommel's message is as clear and important today as it was then. Lee Allen. Next, we have a note on the historical setting. Historical setting. Europe at the beginning of 1914 was deceptively quiet. Under a thin veneer of peace, stresses and strains had developed that would soon rip the existing structure of nations apart. On the continent, Germany had attained dominance as a result of its success in the Franco-Prussian War of 1870 and its rapid industrialization. By 1914, she had established an overseas empire and a navy to protect it. She had become a world power on a collusion course with other European powers of the time. <clears throat> France had recovered rapidly after 1870, but the humiliation of her defeat and loss of Alsace-Lorraine were not forgotten. By 1914, France was second in power only to Germany on the continent and was looking for revenge. The British had become increasingly fearful of the threat Germany's navy posed to their empire. 
In the East, there was constant friction between Russia and the Austro-Hungarian Empire, which was in the final stages of a long decline in power. National aspirations in the Balkans, and especially in Serbia, were laid, which laid claim to portions of Austria, were a particular point of irritation. Russia, anxious to extend its influence to the Balkans and thence to the Dardanelles and the Mediterranean Sea, sided with Serbia against Austria. Russia also had an interest in the dismemberment of the Turkish Empire and had supported the successful efforts of several Balkan states to force Turkey out of most of her European provinces in 1913. Turkey, for her part, not nurtured a deep hatred for Russia. By 1914, Austria and Italy had established the Triple Alliance, and England, France, and Russia formed the contending Triple Entente, all set about preparing for war. The tensions that developed needed only triggering to plunge Europe into war. The murder of Austrian Archduke Franz Ferdinand and his wife by a Serbian assassin on June 28, 1914, was the trigger. A complex series of ultimatums, mobilizations, and war declarations followed. Austria declared war on Serbia. Germany demanded Russia halt its mobilization, and when the demand was ignored, declared war on Russia and France, which was committed to honoring its alliance with Russia. The German invasion of Belgium, at which point this book begins, brought England into the war. By August 14th, Germany and Austria, the Central Powers, were at war with the Allies, namely Belgium, Britain, France, Russia, and Serbia. Italy remained neutral, claiming that it was obliged to assist the other members of the Triple Alliance only if they were attacked. Later, Turkey and Bulgaria sided with the Central Powers. Italy, Romania, and the United States of America, as well as many others, joined with the Allies. Rommel's experience in the war was unusual in its scope. He served in Belgium, France, Romania, Austria, and Italy, and fought the French, Russians, Romanians, and Italians. His story begins on July 31, 1914, the Eve of War. Thus ends our note from the publisher. We now begin with our forward to the 1937 edition. This book describes numerous World War I battles which I experienced as an infantry officer. Remarks are appended to many descriptions in order to extract worthwhile lessons from the particular operation. The notes, made directly after combat, will show German youth capable of bearing arms, the unbounded spirit of self-sacrifice and courage with which the German soldier, especially the infantryman, fought for Germany during the four-and-a-half-year war. The following examples are proof of the tremendous combat powers of the German infantry, even when faced with superior odds in men and equipment. And these sketches are again proof of the superiority of the junior German commander to his enemy counterpart. Finally, this book should make a contribution towards perpetuating those experiences of the bitter war years, experiences often gained at the cost of great deprivations and bitter sacrifice. Erwin Rommel, Lieutenant Colonel. So thus we have the end to our note from the author. And here we have the beginning of chapter one, which shall be included in the following recording. Thank you for joining us and have a wonderful evening.